Howdy. A basic earthquake watch. Since I have a little bit spare time. Something going on in Corsica. This seems to be deeper. 18 kilometers in depth. It is orange in color. There, near white rivers in the Dolomites. 10 kilometers in depth, 2.2. Rather interesting. Furthermore, we have two smaller here. Slovenia, 8 kilometers in depth, 1.2. 0 0.78 kilometers in depth. There might be bad weather as well going on there, I don't know. Didn't really have time to check today, <clears throat> but I have noticed there's somewhere here near Frankfurt. There's a quake and beside it we have Lachersee. So there is like 130 kilometers between them. Not too far away. And here on the other side there is also volcanic activity going on. Jeb Basin Volcanic Area. Which is approximately it's a little bit more far away, but anyway. Let's have a look at this. Büdingen. It's there in the forest. There is already a castle marked. The old town of Büdingen. And it's not king's, I don't know what first means in English. I have no idea. But let's check it out. Büdingen on Google Earth. Let's fly to Büdingen from Lake Baikal. First, we watch pictures. Red brick. Basic Central European style in a way this is very fascinating since they have red stones there might be some elderly ruins or whatever but there is red stone might indicate that there is iron in it Very interesting. And there are crosses and also these helmets, which I think are somehow like crowns. They are, after all, depicting plasma discharge phenomena from the sky. Underneath we have repetitive patterns. This could be Squatterman as well. Yeah, there's an old town there, and a deer, and a site, and something very interesting. What's that? Fulgurite, probably. More ruins, so this place has been always important. Wikipedia. Major Benjamin Harris. Really? <laughs> Büdingen is a town in Wetterau Kreis. Wetter means weather. Au could be this kind of uh, river bend or something where we have like this kind of flood area. But it's not necessarily so. It is mainly known for its well preserved, heavily fortified medieval town wall and half-timbered houses. Building is in the south of the Wetterau, below the Vogelsberg hills, 
at an altitude of approximately 160 meters. Büting is situated in a wet and swampy valley. Ow, that's what I tried to explain, so it was after all correct. The castle and the old town therefore rest on centuries-old oak planks placed horizontally across vertical beach piles. The water level has to be kept high enough so that no air can reach these foundations. That's a pile dwelling town. Are you kidding me? <laughs> what? Are you kidding me? History. Around 700, the wooden church of Saint Remigius was built by an unknown lord. In 847, a Büdingen was named in a document for the first time, but it is not clear which Büdingen it was meant, because there are some other smaller towns with the same name in Germany and Lorraine. So it would be very interesting what Büdingen originally means. Well, spring, maybe? The international floor was added to San Remigus's church in about 1050. Now the building has basically remained unchanged since then. But I want to check out one, th one thing. There was mentioned this one mountain or hill. Vogelsberg. I wouldn't be surprised if this would be a cryptodome. Hence a volcano, which erupts mostly by water. The Vogelsberg is a large volcanic mountain range in the German central uplands. Mm, yes. Emerging basal formation, consisting of multiple layers that descend from their peak in a ring shaped terraces to the base. Very interesting. Taufstein. State, range coordinates, parent range, basalt, orogeny, low mountains, extinct volcanoes. So, I was right after all. Muschelkalk, yeah, limestone, sandstones, tertiary sands. As a result of volcanic activity, mainly basaltic lava and pyroclastic deposits were formed. During the course of this volcanicity, trashite and phonolite were produced in the earlier stages. In the early stages. Then alkali olivine basalts were deposited, which alternated with tholates. Tholates, these volcanic products overlaid a basement of ponder sandstones and tertiary sands. Erosion following the Miocene wore away the contiguous basalt napes, naps, napes, which originally reached as far as the area of the lower mine, which is a river, back to isolated deposits in the central complex. Under tropical to subtropical conditions, the volcanic rocks were turned into red clays by lateric weathering. What is lateric weathering? Laterite is both a soil in a rock type rich in iron. Yeah, that's why they have red rocks. And aluminium. And is commonly considered to have formed in hot and wet tropical areas. Nearly all laterites are of rusty red coloration because of high iron oxide content. They develop by intense and prolonged weathering of the underlying parent rock, usually when, the, when there are conditions of high temperatures and heavy rainfall, which alternate wet and dry periods. Tropical weathering, weatherization, is a prolonged process <clears throat> of chemical weathering, which produces a wide variety in the thickness, 
grade chemistry or mineralogy of these resulting soils. The majority of the land area containing laterites is between the tropics of Cancer and Capricorn. Kerala, India, India, Vietnam, yes, These ions form soluble salt compounds which dry on the surface. These salts are washed away during the next wet season. Laterite formation is favored in low topographical reliefs. Reliefs of gentle crests and plateaus which prevent erosion of the surface cover. <clears throat> yeah, but how they got there? Why is there a volcano in the first place? Let's go back and back again. Let's go back to the volcanic application. You can see, as I can see, we have water rains all over the place, even some rather short ones. <laughs> So this quake is literally on a water wane. And they are talking about extinct volcanoes. I have to disagree. Because I think as long as there is water pouring out of these mountains, they aren't extinct. So the amount of water which is flowing out of these mountains will fluctuate because it is a constantaneous stream of energy. Water flows, you can harvest the energy. It is a stream of energy, otherwise you couldn't get any, any energy out of it. Prove me wrong. So, every water vein is a stream of energy which fluctuates. Sometimes it's like that, Sometimes it's like that, and sometimes it might be like that. Yeah, I know it's red, it's not watercolor, but I just want to emphasize that scalability has to, taken, has to be taken into account in a big way. These mountains, whatever this mountain range was, I don't remember it, is not dead. It is still active, it's still producing water. There is still water pouring out of the mountain. It is not dead. And it will fluctuate. Now let's just look at this one. Is there any water vein here? Probably not. Or it's not just, just not on the map. But there is water, otherwise no one would build a house there. And very often it's much cheaper to get a well drilled instead of getting the water from the city or wherever you get it. We have mining operations. They were talking about alkalines. Here they're making, what is it, asphalt, I guess in English too street stuff. Concrete might be also mined there somewhere because it seems to be alkaline. And here they have dig down, duck down. 
gray, gray, white. And the watercolor probably tells that it is it contains at least to some degree gypsum, which is alkaline. Hence this water is charged. Yeah, I think I will leave it here. There, this could be continued endlessly. We could make a quick search for dragons. We could make a quick look about geothermal activity in this region. CO2 emissions. Yeah, actually this we should do. <laughs> Where are we? Frankfurt. Let's zoom out a little bit more. And you can see this triangle. Now, I've been talking about this and there's a circle beside it. There's another one actually here. It's just not that well visible. But anyway, let's go to Windy and check it out. Windy. So we are approximately here. We could check it out, search for, what was it, Frankfurt? Was it? No. Koblenz, where we had big floods. Was it two years ago? Frankfurt, yeah. A little bit north of Fra Frankfurt am Main, which is also a very big river. Schluchten, Fulda, it might be here somewhere in between. Bad Soden Salmünster. There is bath activity going on there. <coughs> so here we have Frankfurt, and somewhere here is the region of the mountain. Let's pull out CO2 concentration. Nothing visible. Since it's everywhere. I'm not expecting that there would be some plume or anything. But I think that's also very interesting. We have to go back. Here. Holland. Coast region. Very strong CO2 emissions. I probably should make once a video about the coast of Holland and these countries because they are very interesting. There's another plume. There might be something like industrial emissions as well playing a role, but there are so many other very interesting things there. So not really any emissions coming out there. But I'm not so sure about this. This might be some wildfires. Bordeaux? Yeah, I guess that's wildfire. Same in Spain or Portugal. Let's see fire intensity and then I will leave it here. Where is it? Fire intensity. Fire intensity. And I have been watching fire intensity maps many times. And I was wondering K-Town. Is there any fire in Mannheim? We found a river. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's obviously white. <laughs> uh, that there is some big, 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 big industrial area. So this might be the origin of the CO2 concentration after all. Who knows? Meandering river. And I don't know where we are. Germany, Osthoven, Gensheim. Saarbrücken, Trier. We aren't too far from Lachersee and these places. If you just could see Koblenz. It is the River Rhine. Bringen am Rhein. Boppart, Koblenz. Ah. <coughs> Yeah, I think I'll be leaving it here. I got to do some other stuff too. But thanks for watching. Uh, I just followed an earthquake and we are watching now some fire intensity map. This is how all the things are connected. <clears throat> anyway, thanks.